Hi, and welcome to another five minute tip. In this tip, we're going to be looking at dynamics, baking it, and how that can help you achieve your desired end result. You know, we've all had to do a logo animation at some point in time. Uh, for this example, I've created a cylinder and a few arrows pointing toward it. Uh, the goal, the art direction we got from our imaginary client is that we want these arrows to fall from above and we want them all to be pointing toward the center of the circle when they land on the floor. Now, this is easy enough to do here by positioning them. However, it gets a little bit more tricky when you bring dynamics into the equation. So let's play with that a little bit and see how that would work. I'm using the broadcast edition of Cinema 4D, so I'll be using MoGraph Dynamics. To do that, I'll create a fracture object and put my arrows inside of it. I'm going to add a simulation tag for a collider body to my floor. And I'm going to add a simulation tag of a rigid body to my fracture object. If I were to put everything back to the start and move my arrows up, we can see them fall just like that. Now, it has a very bouncy effect. That's on purpose. It's just to drive the point home of what we're trying to do here. This is one of those situations where dynamics gives you really good looking animation, but you lose a lot of control. So what we'll do is bake the animation. If I select the fracture object, and then I go to simulation tags, sorry, MoGraph tags, we can add a MoGraph cache tag. And this has a bake option, so we'll just click it. Now what it's done is baked our animation and put it into a cache. And now we can scrub back and forth and we can actually see our animation happen like this. This may not seem special, but if the bake tag was not there, you're not able to scrub back and forth. You can scrub from the beginning forward, but then once you go back, everything starts to mess up. Dynamics are tricky that way. But with the cache, we have the animation baked and we now have the animation for these arrows. So it would be great if we could just reposition the arrows and well, baking the cache allows us to do that. We can now take the fracture object and rotate it, move it, and the animation is still baked. But that doesn't work for us because all of our arrows are moving in unison. So what I'm gonna do is delete this cache tag, ungroup the arrows from the fracture object, and I'm going to copy the fracture object three times. So now I can put one arrow per fracture object. And then we can play our animation just to make sure everything looks good. Yep, that's still what we want. And now I select all three fracture objects and I add a MoGraph cache tag to each one and then click bake. So now what we have is three independently baked dynamic simulations, all doing their own thing. But now we can move them independently. So what we can do is scrub forward to the end of the animation right here around frame 55. And then we can go to our top view, select our first fracture object, make sure it's just like the client wants, our imaginary client, it's pointing toward the center. Take our second fracture object, again, make sure it's pointing right towards the center, just like our imaginary client wants. And do the same with our third fracture object. The origin here is making it a bit difficult to rotate, but that's okay. So we've just tweaked the end state of our dynamic simulation, which means when we scrub backwards in time, these are gonna bounce all around and fall. Now, if we go back to the start of the animation, they're placed quite strangely, but that's off camera. We're not gonna see that. Now, in our animation, no matter how our camera perspective is, when we play it back, they're going to fall perfectly into place. So this is just sort of a silly example of how you can create a dynamic simulation, have it sort of just do its own thing, and then you can go back to it and just tweak the positioning of the end state a little bit.
Now, obviously, this won't work if your dynamic simulation is bouncing off of other objects or if you have other complexities involved. But for simple tasks like this, I'd say it's the easiest way to get the result. I hope you guys enjoyed this tip. Hope it was useful. As always, let me know, and I'll see you next time.